thank you. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Yeah, good afternoon. <laughs> okay, my name is Tita from Indonesia Office. Thank you yeah, for coming to this event after doing the registration last time. So today we will have guest lecture from Portugal. The title is about Portugal past and present. Okay, before we start the class, I want to know what you know about Portugal. What is the famous thing about Portugal? Siapa yang tahu? The one who can answer my question, I will give present. What is it? Football? Yeah, football. Please specific. Liga? Footballnya apa? Ya, boleh. Kurang spesifik. Apa? Similar, sorry. Similar English to Brazil. Okay, and you know about football. Other question? Other question? Other answer, please. Portugal. Who is the famous one for Portugal? Cristiano Ronaldo. So, Sofia. Who is the one, the winner of my question? Who will be the winner of my question about Portugal? Cristiano Ronaldo. Same language with Brazil. Okay. Football is like a religion in Portugal and in Brazil. So, and of course, in the city Portuguese, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. So I give three prizes for them. Three of them. Okay. Okay. Three of you will get 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 present from me. Thank you so much. So I will introduce our speaker today. Miss Sofia Gramaso, she is uh, coming from the University of Porto in Portugal. Please welcome Miss Sofia. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, my name is Sofia Gramaso. I work in the International Office of the University of Porto. And today, I have uh, brought to you uh, a presentation about Portugal past and present. As I don't want it to be very boring. Uh, I'm showing you, uh, I'm, I'm talking about um, Portugal, the country, how we were born, how we developed um, around the world, conquering the world. I'll speak about the Portuguese language, uh, and uh, I'll speak about the Portuguese history, and then uh, of the past. And, uh, and then I will show you a, a video of present Portugal also. And then at the end, I will give you also a small presentation about the University of Porto and the international relations uh, that we have there in the university. If you have any questions during my presentations, please feel free to, to talk, to interrupt me. Um, and uh, if you have any doubts or if you need more information or if you don't understand what I say, Portuguese flag. I don't know if you know about this. It's green and uh, red. So green means hope in Portuguese, and red means the blood, blood that was shed uh, to build a Portuguese nation. Okay. So do you know where Portugal is? What continent? Europe. Correct. So if I show you a map of Europe, do you know where Portugal is? Where do you think it's in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, in the center? Think, think good. We were pioneers. We discovered the world. So you cannot be on the inside, correct? So we are here. This is Portugal. We are a very small country. Okay, so. About Portugal. Our official name is the Portuguese Republic. Uh, the capital of Portugal is Lisbon. I am from Porto and from the University of Porto, which is the second biggest city in Portugal. 
Uh, also, what very important cities are Aveiro, Braga, Coimbra, Évora, Faro, Funchal, and Madeira. Actually, Cristiano Ronaldo was born in Funchal, Madeira. Ponta Delgada in the Azores, Porto, where I come from, and Setúbal, for instance. So, our current constitution was um, established in 1976, so more than 40 years ago. We talk Portuguese, we speak Portuguese, and our currency is the euro. And we are, as you can see, a small country. We are only 10 million people in the entire country. So when more than 20% of our population is Roman Catholic, and then we have other religions, um, people with no religion also, and, and 8.3% of the population does not have uh, declared uh, religion. So, let's watch a brief history of Portugal, okay? Even though the monarch has been abolished for some time now. 
And because Spain helped them retain Brazil, Portugal was able to draw upon Portugal to help fund the war, which would last 28 years. In 1668, Spain officially recognized Portugal as independent. 20 years later, gold was discovered in Brazil, and boom, Portugal was rich beyond belief. And good thing too, as on the morning of November 1st, 1755, a devastating earthquake struck. The quake, the tsunamis, and the fires that resulted pretty much annihilated the country and everything in it. The castles, the treasures, the yards, in addition to the heavy loss of life. The king at the time was Joseph I, and he had appointed this guy, we'll call him Sebastian for short, or better yet by his title, Marquis of Pombal. It was his swift reaction, his economic reform policies, and financial restructuring that allowed Portugal to rebuild quickly. His strong leadership ensured the country would not fall into ruin and hardship, and statues and other tributes to him are everywhere. His cost control measures were not favored by the upper crust, nor was he a very nice guy otherwise, so he was exiled. The years after the rebuild period also saw an invasion by Napoleon. He actually took Lisbon for a couple of years, but Portugal called them their English buddies for help. Brazil's independence followed in 1822. Some political jostling and rumblings in the African colonies bring about Britain's ultimatum, demanding the retreat of all Portuguese troops from the area known as the Pink Map, so that Britain could connect Cairo to Cape Town by rail. The follow and the protest of this political stiff arm basically collapsed the Portuguese monarchy. This brings us to World War I, in which Portugal summoned to the Allies. But post-war turmoil and unrest lead to a coup in May of 1926, which gave power to the military and eventually saw the rise of Antonio Salazar. And he took Portugal into a tough period of dictatorship, oppression, and media censorship. He also led the country through the Second World War, in which Portugal was technically neutral, but did supply troops under the British flag, but also conducted trade with both sides. In the late 1960s, Salazar was forced to retire due to a back cup brain hemorrhage and turned the reins over to a slightly less radical successor. In 1974, the peaceful Carnation Revolution removed the radicals from power without a single vote. This opened the door to bigger and better things. But it was really January the 1st, 1986, when Portugal joined the economic community, now known as the EU, that things really started to turn around. Funds were being available to build roads, schools, medical facilities, and allow for foreign investment. This is what really led to the Portugal we are able to visit and enjoy today. So there you have it, a brief history of Portugal. Thanks for watching. Can you read it? Yes. So, did you know anything about this? Nothing. Did you know that we were uh, that we discovered a lot of countries in the 15th century, like Brazil? And do you know which ones more? No. Okay. So these are the milestones of the creation of Portugal. So the our foundation was in the 9th century, and then our refoundation in the 11th century. Then. Sovereignty in 1128, and then Portugal, as we know it right now, was uh, established in uh, 1143. And uh, in 1910, 20th century, we uh, ended the monarchy, and we now are a republic. And then in 1986. We uh, accessed the European Union. So these are the Portuguese milestones. So this is the first king of Portugal, Afonso Henrique, also known as Afonso the First. So uh, Portugal is the old state of the Iberian Peninsula. We have been invaded by several uh, people. Uh, and different uh, nationalities along the centuries. Uh, but in uh, 1843, Portugal was created. So, Arturo Mil Dias and Vasco da Gama. So, these two uh, were uh, navigators. These people discovered 
uh, the way of coming to Asia by boat. So which was in uh, the late 15th century. Uh, there was no official way of getting into Asia. So Vatuvo um, Vilias, this one, discovered um, the way of passing in South Africa, the, the case of Torrance. And then Vasco da Gama did the second trip and he arrived in India. So, it was called in the 15th and the 16th century. Um, Portugal uh, was established. We were the first global empire in the world, becoming one of the world's major economy, political and military power. Uh, during this period in Portugal, we call it the Age of Discovery. Uh, Portuguese explorers pioneered maritime exploration, as I told you about, Bartolomeu Dias and also Vasco da Gama. And after that, two years later, Pedro Alves Cabral decided he wanted to go to Asia, but instead of doing this, like from Europe and then going to India, he wanted to go from Europe to Asia directly, but he wasn't expecting that America was there. So, he wanted to go, he went like, so Portugal is here, he wanted like this, and he discovered Brazil by chance. It was by chance that Brazil was discovered. This was in 1500, 1500. So it was 518 years ago. So, during this time, Portugal uh, monopolized the space spice trade. So we came to Asia to bring spices to go back to, to Portugal and tea, for instance. And the empire expanded the military campaigns in Asia. And yes, we were here in Indonesia too. But unfortunately, episodes such as the destruction of Lisbon in 1755 and the country uh, occupation during the Napoleonic Wars and the independence of Brazil, Portugal started to go down. So, people, we people from war and this diminished our world power. So, about the 20th century, right now, right now, no, the last century. So, in, it was a major change in Portugal, the 20th century as in Europe in general. So in 1910, we were deposed to the monarchy and uh, we uh, proclaimed the republic. And in 1933, as you saw in the video, a uh, man not called Antonio Salazar was a dictator uh, in Portugal. He was an authoritarian, we had an authoritarian regime for more than 30 years, which ended in 1974 of the Carnation Revolution. So, next Wednesday is a, a national holiday in Portugal, because everyone goes to the streets and celebrate freedom and, and democracy. So it was called Carnation Revolution, because the Carnation, I don't know if you know, it's a flower. Yeah. It symbolized uh, blood and pain. So, but uh, an um, opposite of all revolutions, no one died. There was one, not even one dead shot during this revolution. So it was a very peaceful revolution. And in this year, we commemorate the 44 years of the Carnation Revolution. So, after this period, in the 70s, we gave the independence to almost our overseas territories. Brazil was in the 19th century, uh, and Rome, Mozambique, a lot of countries that I will tell you about in a while. So, uh, our empire, I don't like to use the word empire because I think it's very negative. So, uh, we hands off Macau, I don't know if you have ever heard of Macau, in China. Macau was a Portuguese province until 1999. So, 
less than 20 years ago, we may mark the end uh, of what can be considered the longest rich colonial empire, only uh, compared, for instance, with England, Spain, or uh, the Holland. So, now let's watch a modern Portugal video. It takes about 15 minutes, it's really interesting, and uh, I, I think it will give you a, a glimpse of what Portugal is right now. For instance, 20 years ago, Portugal, 10 years ago, Portugal wasn't like this. But we developed, and since we entered the European Union in 1986, we are now a very developed country. Okay, so let's watch it. Enticing, from an exciting variety of bakaha dishes 
to the mouth-watering Torte de Viana. The city's popular August festival is a vibrant parade filled with traditional food and fare that come alive through Madonnas, whose bright native dress is also displayed in a local museum. Building on its green credentials, Viana also leads the way in wind farm technologies and wind turbine manufacturing. The beautiful Portuguese island of Madeira is the country's most exotic and unique destination. Well known for its explosive New Year's Eve celebrations, Madeira's extreme landscapes also offer a host of exhilarating outdoor activities, while its subtropical climate provides a nature lover's ideal retreat. Pioneering development and communication technologies, Vodafone Foundation Portugal, in conjunction with the Portuguese Navy, has recently updated its groundbreaking solar-powered float for monitoring and reporting on beach conditions. As part of the Healthy Beaches program, initially launched in 2005 by the Vodafone Foundation Portugal, the Beaches Live app now provides real-time updates in six languages, covering 174 beaches across the country. Helping improve the quality and safety of Portugal's beaches, the Beaches Live app also serves as an invaluable tool providing tourists with real-time tidal, wind, air temperature and UV index information. Providing strategic access to numerous international markets, Portugal has become an increasingly favourable choice for international firms and investors. The Portuguese economy was very traditional. The Portuguese wine, the Portuguese olive oil, the Portuguese fruits were known around the world. What happened in the last decade is a huge transformation from the traditional sectors. The Portuguese economy has seen incredible diversification in recent years, with technology and renewable energy stepping into the forefront, while from agriculture to textile manufacturing, even Portugal's most established industries are looking to the future and adopting sustainable practices. The Portuguese car industry today represents more than 850 million euros of exports with a very high value. We represent more than 15,000 jobs within forest and industry and it's really a good case of wrapping together all the three pillars of sustainability, economy, environment and social. Found not only as a wine stock, but in art, fashion and construction, Cork is a state of modern ingenuity. As the global food supply chain expands, so does the importance of buying local, low-impact organic products certified to European standards. Accounting for almost 10% of the country's exports and 20% of employment in the manufacturing sector, the Portuguese clothing and textile industry is thriving and poised to grow even amidst a challenging global economy. Leading the industry since 1948, family-owned and operated Lavavino has an incredible global reach, supplying countries across five continents with a range of high-quality home textiles. The supplier of choice for top fashion brands, Lavavino is a national leader in trade, showcasing the importance of innovation even in traditional industries. La Marino's success relies not only on meticulous weaving, printing and finishing, but on its continuous dedication to research and development, which propels the company forward from generation to generation. Recently granted with the Global Organic Textile Standard Certification, the company's organic cotton products set the standard for sustainability and natural processes. With more than half of the country's electricity needs being met by renewables and a further abundance of wind, water and sun, Portugal is poised to become a regional exporter of green energy. Environment, energy, green growth, green tax, it's uh, an agenda that is not just seen as an uh, environment friendly agenda, but in Portugal it's really the growth and environment agenda and I'm quite confident that in the future Portugal will go even further 
not just being seen as a rich country on sustainability, but also a country that being rich on sustainability generates the GDP and generates jobs. Having one of the highest global penetrations of fibre optics and a progressive approach to research in medical sciences, Portuguese innovation carves the leading edge with international players like Vodafone paving the way. World leaders in anti-aging and non-invasive liposuction, Dr. Humberto Barbosa's renowned Clinica do Tempo combines aspects of nutrition and weight loss, aesthetics and overall health and wellness in order to research, prevent and treat the adverse effects of environment and aging. It's very easy to delay our biological clock. We need to have good nutrition, we need to exercise, we need to control our stress and we need to have emotional equilibrium. This is the formal for the interview. To complement long-term balance and provide instant results, Clinica do Tempo also specializes in breakthrough cosmetic solutions like Liposhaper and Eternus, the first non-invasive liposuction and lifting treatments. It's a laser, a low density laser, that will break the fat cell and the fat will go out of the system by the bottom of the weight of the remaining fat. It's a completely non-invasive treatment, no anesthetic, no bleeding, no pain, and you don't need that in recovery kind of time. While true beauty shines from within as a balance of physical, mental and emotional well-being, environmental and genetic factors can play a role in degrading one's health. Clinica do Tempo and Dr. Barbosa's work can help balance and rejuvenate, keeping at bay the effects of time and healthy longevity. From the rolling mountains and valleys of the north to the natural wonders of the coast, Portugal's leading global hotel group, Pastrana Hotels, has over 50 remarkable properties, spanning the country from the shore to further inland, with an extensive portfolio of hotels, resorts, and the quintessential cruzadas. Pastrana provides for every occasion, from the family holiday to the city break and romantic escapes. While well-appointed rooms and a range of accommodation options are top selling points, it's the personal service and attention to detail that stand out the most. From monumental palaces and castles, to historic monasteries and tranquil retreats atop many new villages, Astana hotels and resorts and boutique posadas offer a true unique experience to have the time of your life and take part in living history, exploring the country's iconic landmarks of the living. So, as you can see, we are a good uh, country to live. 
that it should be at least recognized as one of the 15 sustainable states. So, um, let me just tell you that, of course, we are a member of OECD. We have, uh, although we have a Catholic majority, uh, Portugal is, modern Portugal uh, has moral freedom. Anyone can be what religion they want. And we were the first country to abolish life imprisonment and one of the earliest to abolish capital uh, punishment. And um, as uh, for the last uh, six centuries, seven centuries, Portugal has left a profound cultural and architectural influence across the globe. So, I don't know if you know that, but in the world, 260 million people speak Portuguese. Uh, and also we are a member of the United Nations, European Union, NATO, Eurozone, OECD, and the com Community of Portuguese Language Club. So, Portuguese in number, the Portuguese language. We are officially speak spoken in nine countries in the world. In 261 million people speak Portuguese as the first language in the world and we are the fifth more spoken language in the world. So, did you know that Brazil and Portugal are not only the, part of the countries that speak Portuguese? Angola, Cape Verde, Guinea, which are in Africa, Macau in China, Mozambique in Africa, São Tomé in Africa, Timor-Leste, just around the corner here in next to uh, Indonesia. And also uh, the former Portuguese India also use Portuguese as their main language. Did you know about this? No? So, the uh, Portuguese language uh, is also official uh, language in the European Union, the Mercosul, which is the um, European Union of South America and the Africa Union. So, today more than 100 people speak Portuguese as native language, being the third most spoken language in the Western world and the fifth in the world. So this is a map of Portuguese speaking countries. So, you have here Portugal, and here Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau, São Tomé, Angola, Mozambique, East Timor and of course Brazil, almost 190 million people speak Portuguese in Brazil. We have uh, different accents, but it's the same language. So how did this happen? How come was Portuguese and is Portuguese now the most spoken language in the world? Because of things we said, we've seen it in the past presentation. So, I'm sorry. So we were, um, the Portuguese language spread throughout the world with, uh, the, in the 15th and 16th centuries and we are a language of nine independent countries like at the end of the law, language Portugal has undergone some changes in the history evolution which is completely normal. And now this Portuguese language comprises several dialects and subtitles, speech, Speeches are often quite distinct, besides two international recognized standards, Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese. So, Portuguese from, it's a, a Latin uh, language. So the Romans, when they were uh, conquering the European space, um, arrived in Portugal, then called Positania. And then, they, um, everyone started to use Latin because Romans spoke Latin, which is now in Rome, in Italy, they speak Italian. So, in essence, a Roman, it is a Romanesque language, uh, which is uh, a, a, the base for Castilian, most known as Spanish, Catalan, who is speaking Barcelona, for instance, Italian, French, and Romanian. These are all Roman, Romanesque languages. So, about foreign relations. We are member of the United Nations that I talked uh, to you about, NATO, OECD, EFTA, European Union. 
1996, we in Portugal co-founded the community uh, of Portuguese language countries, CPLP, which is uh, added in Lisbon. And also in 1983, we are full member of the Latin Union and, and for, since 49, organization of the Ibero American states. It also Portugal still at this moment is very connected to Brazil. We have a friendship alliance and dual citizenship treaty. Also, the world's oldest alliance is between Portugal and England since the 14th century. It's called the Treaty of Windsor. It is still now, today, it, it's still in function. So, uh, renowned Portuguese politicians in the world. This is José Manuel Durango Raposo. Uh, we call him Durango Raposo. He was the Prime Minister of Portugal and uh, he was nominated President of the European Commission, which is the most powerful office in the European Union. So he was like the President of the European Union. And uh, two years ago, Antonio Guterres, he, is, um, he has won, he is now the current Secretary General of the United Nations in New York. And he is also the former uh, Prime Minister of Portugal. Did you know that the Portuguese uh, politician was the President Secretary General of the United Nations? No? Yeah. Now I know. So, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo is my best. I love Cristiano Ronaldo. He, for me, is uh, the best uh, Portuguese football player of all time and probably the best player ever in the world. Of course, there's Maradona, of course, and Messi, but Cristiano Ronaldo is also is better. So he he wins everything. He wins everything. He won. He has a record. Uh, he won five Ballon d'Or awards. He is the most um, one of the most European player. The first player to win four European Golden Shoes. He has won 25 trophies in his career, including five ti legal titles for UEFA Championship Leagues with Real Madrid and also, I think, Manchester United and won UEFA European Championship. So he is a, a very, he's like the best scorer. He has scored over 650 career, the goals in his career for his clubs and for Portugal. And also he's a very big and a very, he has a big heart. He's a very good philanthropist. He helps people in need because he came from, he was very poor when was a child. So he understands uh, people don't, that don't have money and need that um, education or help in health. So he's a, he has a, a foundation and he's one of the best, uh, he is really a good heart. Also Jose Mourinho, I don't know if you know Jose Mourinho. Yeah. He, he is the, the manager of uh, Manchester United and he was named Portuguese coach of the century by the Portuguese Football Federation three years ago. And uh, in, 19, in 2017, he was named the best 10 greatest coaches. And in the same year, in 2017, he also became the first coach to have spent more than one billion pounds or one and a half and a billion euro on transfer. Of course, Portugal, I don't know if you know this, were the European champions 2016. We won uh, the final in France, in Paris, and we won against the French, which is not very good because the French were playing home, but actually we won the game. And it was a magical moment for all Portuguese people. It was an amazing moment. Everyone was on the street celebrating for like two days. And we were very proud because this was the first time that we won such a big, uh, important uh, championship. Also, we have a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, his name was uh, José Saramago. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1998. He died a few years ago. He was quite old. And uh, he's considered one of the best writers in the world, the most gifted novelist alive in the world today. This was in 2003. He's all, he was also very famous. But actually, he lived in Spain. 
We have uh, in, in University of Porto 4,000, more than 4,000 international students, which is 14% of the total uh, number of students. 2,500, more than 2,500 are mobility student programs, students. So they come for a period of uh, one semester or one, one year to the University of Porto. We have students that are studying full degree, integrated master, first cycle, master and PhD. As you can see, 4,000 international students are a very good number. So regarding incoming students, of course, 1,000 of them are from the Americas, from Brazil. It's the country that we receive the most because, of course, of the language and the cultural... Um, uh, we are very similar, uh, uh, culturally speaking. In Europe, we receive more than, from Europe, more than 1,000 students, almost 70 from Africa and 252 from Asia, mainly from China, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, India. Yeah, a lot of uh, Asian students. And of course, the first, the first country that comes more to Portugal is Brazil, then Spain, Italians, Polish and Germans. But double the number is female. More girls than boys coming to Portugal. So also, I don't know if you've heard about the Erasmus Mundus program, uh, that's why I'm here. I want a grant of mobility um, from the, the Erasmus Mundus program. And we are have around 600 protocols with universities in all over the world. And we, are, we participate in all these international associations. In 2017, we won an institutional award for innovation in internationalization in one of the, the, the most important European Association for International Education. Uh, this is our Vice Rector, Professor Fatima Marino, that went to Liverpool in England to pick up the prize and that we were very proud. Of course we are. Uh, we have 25 units of research and development and all of them are considered exceptional, excellent or very good. We are also a top producer of science in Portugal. More, almost 25% of the papers produced in Portugal are done in the University of Porto. We are very committed to the society. We have made an, an education fair for secondary school for students that want to choose where to go to university. We have a junior summer school in, in the summer. We have a fair um, a, a, a promote, we promote employability with a, um, a job fair and of course Porto, uh, University of Porto uh, around Europe and around the world is very very highly um, uh, stated in, uh, in most of the biggest uh, <coughs> rankings, KIES, the Shanghai, um, Webometrics, Tires, the Times Higher Education, Leiden, so we are in a very good number, because 10 years ago we couldn't even dream about these numbers, but now it's a reality. So, about my city, the city of Porto, it's a beautiful city and an historical city. We are a historical city with a wide range of cultural sites, equipments and events. We have a city center with a UNESCO World Heritage. We are one of the less expensive cities in Europe. We are a safe city and we have excellent accesses. So last year, uh, it was a very good and big surprise, we won an award uh, for the best European destination in 2017. Porto was elected best European destination against 12 Paris, Berlin, London. So we, people voted for Porto more for those kind of cities. So, travelers from 175 countries voted for Porto. So, we are known for our history, architecture, cultural, culture, astronomy, trade, encounters and discoveries. So, this is Porto by night, which is also very beautiful. These are uh, one of the seven bridges that we have in the city with a metro system. This is uh, a view from, uh, from the, the main square in Porto, Praça da Liberdade, and this is a photo, a photo from the, 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 the city hall, and this is on Christmas time. This is the House of Music, which uh, has won an award of, um, for, uh, 
for uh, an architecture European award. And also the Contemporary Arts and Knowledge Museum, which is a beautiful, beautiful museum and has a lot of space and parks. And also we have a very good uh, airport, considered the second best European airport in 2011. And so we are a very affordable European city, compared, of course, with other, um, compared, for instance, with Germany or uh, Sweden or Denmark. We are very, very, very much cheaper. So these are the, the prices of uh, a meal, um, accommodation, a coffee, a kind of rice, a kilo of rice, newspaper, cinema, etc. So now I want you to see this uh, this video, and then yes, it's uh, about um, the the world, the best European destination that we won last year. Wine, 
is very important. Uh, we have a lot of wine um, trade um, and also olive oil and uh, of course tourism, you are right. And that's it. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, this should go to Portugal and we will have next year uh, financial support from the European Union to, either to the students from Vilnius University. So if you want to uh, go to Porto, just contact the international office and we will be very happy to help you and I will be very happy to receive you there in, in the University of Porto. Can I just ask you, what, what, are, what do you study here? What do you study here in Vilnius? Oh, okay. Do you? Okay. Psychology? Uh, international relations. Oh, my course. I studied international relations in university. And you? Sorry? Chinese. Oh, Chinese. Okay, sorry. I didn't understand. Management. Management. International business. Literature. Literature? Okay. Oh, computer sciences. I'm sorry. Yes, and you? Yes, and you? Two. Okay. So very different areas, which is very good. And we offer almost, uh, I think, all of the courses that you are studying, we offer it to our international students. So, no more questions? Uh, yes? Can you tell us about the sport the, the, the sports faculty, it's education, uh, physical education science and sports science. So they teach uh, the students how to be professionals uh, in um, like teachers uh, in the schools or in high schools, uh, sports professors, sports teachers. And there's also, uh, for instance, um, a very good uh, master degree in sports management also. Sports management, yes. So it is one of the best schools in Europe for sports, University of Porto. Yes. Yeah. No one wants to go to Portugal. No. <laughs> okay. So if you don't have any more questions, I would like to thank your presence here. And if you don't mind, can we just take a picture together here? Yeah. Okay. Thank you.